my name is Mark Finch. I am lead of the map team at Grey Matter, and today I'm joined by Ron Vincent, who is the uh, senior technical program manager uh, at the GeoMaps team uh, for Microsoft. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Grey Matter for those who uh, are not familiar with with Grey Matter, and then Ron will go straight into sharing some of the um, platform features of Azure Maps, and then we'll end up uh, with a 10 minutes Q&A session at the end. So feel free to um, pop anything into the into the chat as you go if you've got any questions to ask, although I'm sure there will be the opportunity for you to ask questions live at the end. So quick overview of Grey Matter. The next slide, please, Ron. So Grey Matter was found founded in uh, 1983 um, by uh, two developers. We specialize in um, offering um, ISV developers and technical service providers um, the, the ability to be able to offer um, services and software um, uh, via Grey Matter. We have a real focus on ISVs um, and developers, and we have a dedicated mapping team, um, which uh, we have uh, had since 2008. Next slide, please, Ron. So on the right there, you'll see our Microsoft credentials. We have uh, many gold competencies and a uh, quite a few silver competencies as well. Um, we are Azure specialists. We are a direct and indirect CSP provider. So for those of you who want to consume um, Azure uh, for yourselves or those of you who want to be able to resell Azure, we offer those via the uh, CSP program to you. We're also an ISV royalty distributor and a SPLA reseller. Um, and we have a dedicated team of Microsoft Cloud Architects. Next, please, Ron. So we offer a range of services. Um, we've got a team of certified engineers who can help you uh, migrate um, to Azure and deploy in Azure. Um, we also specialize in business intelligence and artificial intelligence. Are all available through um, through the um, Azure as well. Um, we offer a DevOps consultancy, and we also offer a, a bespoke mapping migration service. So, if you are perhaps using uh, an alternative platform, we can help you migrate uh, to Azure Maps with our migration services offering. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Ron, who will take you through all the fantastic features that uh, you'll see um, that are offered with Azure Maps. Thank you, Mark, and uh, thanks to uh, Grey Matter for setting this up and uh, making this possible today. And thanks to everyone for attending. I really appreciate your time and uh, hope you find this uh, valuable over the next. Uh, 40 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about uh, Azure Maps and talk about some of the how Microsoft approaches geospatial. And then we'll show some uh, uh, some demonstrations uh, with our samples and some some apps that you can go off and then build yourself with with uh, Azure Maps and Azure. And of course, how you can take advantage of the uh, of the wonderful offerings that uh, Gray Matter has, and and in their consultancy and in support. So, uh, feel free to drop any questions in the chat window as we go forward, and uh, we'll try to address them at the end, or you can wait till the end and uh, ask your questions that way. So, just also as a reminder that uh, everything is. Uh, this is being recorded, so it's a great opportunity for uh, everyone to chime in and so that hopefully others can benefit from your questions. All right, so let's talk about uh, Azure Maps. What is it? Well, it's a platform as a service in Azure. It's one of the 200 plus services that sits inside of Azure. It's a first party service, meaning Microsoft builds it. And it's a geospatial uh, uh, platform, so it comes with a set of APIs and SDKs, and uh, with that you can uh, pretty much uh, use it alone, or you can use it with other Azure services, and that's really the way 
we intended this to be used. Um, you can use it uh, with uh, various aspects of the rest of Azure. For example, you can use it with Azure Machine Learning, or you can use it with Azure IoT, Azure Databricks. Whatever it is, there's a lot of possibilities in how you can pull Azure Maps together with these uh, other services. The other thing to be aware of with Azure Maps is that we uh, we don't actually build the data that under uh, that's uh, built under it. We partner with different organizations, and so one of the uh, organizations that we partner with is TomTom. They're based. Uh, pretty close to you guys in the Netherlands, and they provide us with our underlying base maps. Uh, so that includes vector tiles, it includes things like geocoding, it includes uh, routing and those kind of capabilities. So the, we chose them because they have a wonderful platform for uh, delivering maps and, and delivering the updates to the map. They use a lot of automated process processes. They have they go out and do probes and they, they actually update these maps 600 million times per year. And every week we get those updates. So if we get them, that means our customers get them. Another company you may or may not have heard of is called Moveit. They're based in Israel and they provide us with mobility as a service. So it's basically public transit, uh, real-time public transit data. So you can figure out when the bus is going to arrive, when the train station is going to, when the train's going to leave at the train station. Um, you can also do things like multimodal routing. For example, routing yourself from your home to the bus stop, from the bus stops uh, to the train station, and all the way to your final destination. So multiple modes of transportation is what I'm referring to. And so they provide us with that to help us make cities more accessible. It's a big focus of Microsoft and our smart city initiatives. And then the last company I will mention here is AccuWeather. And of course, uh, the, what they do is pretty much in their, in their title. They provide us with uh, current and predicted weather. And uh, you can see on the map uh, things like uh, um, weather radar. You can see cloud cover. Uh, so lots of different uh, uh, visualizations. And plus, you, they have a set of APIs that we expose. A lot of times I'm asked a question. So Azure Maps is basically taking these companies and providing them to uh, Azure customers. And that's very true. We are. We're taking these uh, services. We're making them compliant. We're making them secure so that customers can take advantage of all of these APIs with, with them. And you can. what's great about this is that you can just use the parts of Azure Maps that you want. So if all you wanted to do is geocoding, that's all you have to use. You don't have to use any of the other APIs. So that's, that's just one thing to keep in mind. This is a platform as a service, like I mentioned. So it is focused on developers. And it literally takes five minutes to create an Azure Maps account and you're up and running. So there's nothing to install per se. There's no hardware to go buy. There's no software to go buy and configure. Uh, it doesn't take weeks and months to set this up. It literally takes five minutes and you're up and running. And so that's the beauty of this. Once you've got your Azure subscription, an Azure Maps account is is right at your fingertips, just like with any of the other 200 plus services in Azure. So when we think about uh, geospatial um, and we think about applications of location intelligence, as I'm sure many of you know, there's a myriad of possibilities. So these are just some of the high level use cases that you can take advantage of with Azure Maps. So everything from mobility and logistics to Internet of Things, to cloud, mobile, and edge. So things that are deployed out at the edge, out into the world. And then, of course, you can use spatial, do spatial analysis. You can use AI, machine learning, and those kind of things. When it comes to mobility and logistics, you can do everything from fleet management to even things like electric vehicle routing. So you can obviously do routing with a combustion-based engine uh, on, on the vehicle, but it can be even electric vehicle routing. In fact, we recently released the ability to determine uh, the uh, if there's an electric vehicle location or a, a charging station, you can actually uh, determine the kind of connector that it has. So you can find the closest connector or electric vehicle uh, station near you uh, with the right kind of connector so you're not wasting time uh, finding the closest one. 
And if you're, of course, uh, working in, in government, you can do everything from public transit planning, you can create city, dash, city management dashboards, you can deploy your, uh, maybe you're, it's a local government and you're doing things like uh, trying to deploy field service uh, folks out into the out into the world and you're trying to find the optimal routes, for example, and how they can visit locations very efficiently and save time and, and money when it comes to fuel. So there's a lot of possibilities there with what you can do with Azure Maps. Then when it comes to IoT, uh, Microsoft has invested $5 billion into our IoT uh, programs and, and, and actually one of the beneficiaries of that was Azure Maps. So there's been a big focus on this. And uh, that's, what, that's what, what's been really fantastic to see Microsoft make that kind of investment. So you can do everything from asset management, you can do store and facility mapping and create heat maps. And we not only cover the outside world with our maps that we get from TomTom, Tom, but we cover the inside world. So you can do indoor mapping with Azure Maps now. So lots of possibilities there. And as you see on this picture, you can do things like, like uh, look at the uh, foot traffic in a building. So if you're interested in retail and you want to know where your customers are dwelling inside of a inside of a space, you can then. Uh, study that and, and better position products and uh, uh, things that might attract their eye to get them to buy different products. So there's lots of possibilities there. Um, uh, so and 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 so on. Uh, you can also do things like create a store locator or create custom web and mobile applications. So it can be very simple things or it can be very very uh, very much involved things. And we also have satellite imagery that's available inside of uh, Azure Maps too, so keep that in mind. Uh, when it comes to spatial analytics and AI, there's all kinds of possibilities there. You can do things uh, like aerial uh, imagery analysis, uh, remote sensing, you can find the optimal location for a facility, so uh, there's all kinds of applications uh, when it comes to this. And I, I could talk about this uh, for a very long time, but uh, I'm going to move forward just in the interest of time. So when it comes to the rise of location of things, you obviously want to deploy sensors into the world. You want to generate insights. And of course, you want to be able to make data-driven decisions. If you look at traditional geospatial technologies like GIS, they're very much focused on systems of record. But uh, with the rise of location of things and IoT, we're moving more and more towards a system of reality. We are certainly interested in the past, but we also want to be able to do, uh, make real-time uh, data-driven decisions. And so having a system of reality, or you could also call it a connected environment, uh, you could call it whatever, but the idea is you really want to have insights into the here and now. And using AI and machine learning, you also want to be able to predict the future. And that's the power of what you can do with when you combine Azure Maps and some of the other Azure services. So with that in mind, one of the one of the one of the most interesting and common scenarios that you see when you use Azure Maps is just being able to track vehicles. And vehicles is, is a rather generic term. It could be cars, trucks, drones, whatever it is. And with all of the Azure services that are up there, the question becomes, well, how do I hook all these up and, and, and generate a, a solution for whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish? And so this is probably one of the simpler examples here of what you can do. So you see on the right, there's a, this is Washington DC here in the US, and you have a geofence around, uh, around Washington DC, and you simply want to track a vehicle and you want to see if it's inside or outside of that geofence. And so what you can do is actually take the telemetry from that vehicle, as you see here, and send it up to Azure IoT Hub. It is a technology that allows you to ingest and uh, provision devices, ingest telemetry and those kind of things. And then you can have that telemetry sent over to another technology in Azure called Event Grid, and it's an eventing technology. And so what that means is it brings in an event that says something has happened. And uh, for example, that car has entered into a geofence. And when that happens, it actually sends the data to an Azure function 
And that's a function as a service. It's a serverless uh, uh, technology so that when that event is sent to that Azure function, you can then route it to and render it right onto Azure Maps, as you're seeing in the example there. And there's a request and a response, and a bunch of different things can happen here with, uh, with uh, that Azure function, with that event, and how it's rendered on the map. And you have complete control over this entire process. So like I said, this is a platform as a service, so it has a big developer focus. Now later on, I'll talk about Power BI and how you can use Azure Maps and Power BI too. Uh, so anyone can use Azure Maps, but if you are interested in developing your own solutions, uh, this is what exactly what Azure Maps is designed for. You can also take that Azure function and have it send it and put it into a blob storage. So you can take that event, the telemetry that's coming through and just store it. And then you can treat it like it's a system of record and go back and look at what happened over time. Uh, but also there's a real time element to this. And so that's the power of this. And with all of these services, you have an incredible amount of agility uh, because you can mix and match them however you need to, to come up with the optimal solution. You can actually try out multiple architectures. That's the beauty of Azure. You don't have to just pick one and run with it. You can try out uh, many of them and uh, see which ones best work for what you're trying to solve. And so that's a basic uh, overview of what it is. And, and, and then when you look at a little bit deeper into this, you can actually do even more. For example, when we look at this particular uh, uh, slide, you see that there are things that we deploy out into the world. There are insights that we want to generate, and then there are actions that we want to perform on those, on those uh, devices or sensors. So we deploy our devices out into the world here on the left, and we can deploy anything like a, like a sensor that uh, records the temperature or the humidity, or it could be an AI vision device where it's tracking um, uh, uh, whether people are social distancing or whether they're wearing masks. It can be, or whether they're just trying to, uh, uh, maybe they're a wildlife expert and they're trying to uh, uh, capture uh, a, a species that we think is uh, no longer around and they wanna capture that. And, and do some different things with it. So there's all kinds of possibilities here for deploying AI uh, devices out into the world. The next thing we wanna do, of course, is take that telemetry that comes from those devices and send it up to the cloud. And that's what Azure IoT Hub allows you to do. So you can do bi-directional cloud to device, device to cloud communication. You can ingest the telemetry. You can control a device, you can turn it up, you can attenuate it, there's all kinds of possibilities there. You can register it, you can provision it, you can do device management, like a delete a device, disable it. Um, you can do this using various protocols like HTTP, AMQT, uh, QP, and MQTT. So lots of possibilities here for ingesting it. You can also create a digital twin, and that can be, for example, a building, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. Um, and you can uh, uh, correctly represent that building, even topologically correct uh, representation of that building. You can take that uh, uh, telemetry and then do things like cold analytics, hot analytics, warm analytics. You can use Azure Machine Learning, Azure Stream Analytics, Azure Time Series Insight. So there are a lot of possibilities here on what you can do with that telemetry as it comes in. Uh, so you can put it in a data lake, for example. And then finally, you, you know, you want to be able to build unique experience, experiences for your organization or for your customers. For example, you can create web apps. You can create a Power BI dashboard. You can create a mobile app, or you can do things with logic apps and chain a bunch of different things together and then call that even from a web app. So there's all kinds of possibilities here. And that's the beauty of this is that you get a lot of flexibility on the kind of solutions that you're looking for. And of course, Azure Maps is really part of all of this. Everything from the uh, devices out in the field, so you can do things like automotive navigation or edge AI and vehicle object detection, for example. You can create the digital twin of that building. You can figure out um, um, uh, something like uh, tracking that telemetry and making sure that uh, it, uh, the right kind of telemetry is coming in. You can filter it and do all kinds of interesting things with it and then build those unique uh, experiences for your end users. 
And then when we think about Azure Maps, there's quite a bit of uh, possibilities here. Like I said, you've got the maps that we get from TomTom, Tom, you've got the satellite imagery, you have the maps in different styles. So lots of possibilities there that I will show you in a moment. We have the SDKs for web, Android, and uh, iOS eventually will come about. So there's some possibilities there for you to create uh, all kinds of experiences. We have routing, everything from simple point-to-point -point routing, uh, multi-algorithmic routing, uh, batch routing, and even matrix routing. So you can solve the traveling salesman problem. So how many, how many locations do I need to visit today? And what's the optimal route? You can even optimize the waypoints that are on that route too. You can even specify areas that you wanted to avoid. You can include traffic into the routing uh, analysis that happens and so on. So there are a lot of possibilities there. When it comes to search, you can do things like uh, geocoding, right? So you take an address and you convert it into a latitude and longitude, or you can do the reverse of that called reverse geocoding. We have 100 million points of interest that you can search for. So if you want to say, find me the nearest uh, uh, Starbucks or 7-Eleven or whatever it is, you can uh, search for that or search, find me all the closest uh, shoe stores, for example. Uh, so that's all built into Azure Maps. And so it uh, provides a lot of uh, uh, possibilities there. It's a very rich data set. You can also do geocoding in batch too. So if you've got uh, millions of addresses and you want to render them onto the map, you can have it call our geocoding service and it'll convert them to latitude and longitude and you can drop them right onto the map. We also have spatial operations. So you can do things like um, uh, determine the if a point is inside of a polygon. I talked about that earlier when I was talking about uh, the geofence, and that's a perfect example of that. You can say, find the closest point to this point, and that's possible too. Or uh, you can measure the great circle distance on the Earth. So if you're trying to uh, show the route of airplanes, that's a great uh, uh, tool to use. You can create geofences, and I'll come back to that in a, in a moment. You can render uh, the real-time traffic. The traffic is actually uh, data is updated every minute, and it shows not only the traffic flow, but it shows the incidents on the map too. So lots of possibilities there for uh, uh, for making real-time decisions. And this also, like I mentioned before, works with the routing capabilities. You can determine which time zone you're in. So if you work for a multinational organization and you've got uh, some operations that you need to perform across multiple time zones, this can be very helpful. It can also be helpful for uh, when it comes to geolocation. Uh, so when you want to figure out the uh, uh, where, where an IP address is, you can actually figure out which country it comes from. So you can use that for security. Uh, applications like where is that hacker coming from and it'll come back and tell you which country they're in so that's that can be very useful uh, in different scenarios and then I mentioned earlier we have mobility you so you have public transits and how you can get real-time intelligence on on a public transit and and those kind of things so you can do routing even with scooters uh, so that's built into this because we are definitely interested in making uh, cities more accessible, uh, easier to get through. And then we have some here we really want to focus on. So there's data storage, weather services, Power BI, government cloud, and then Azure Maps Creator. So one of the things that we get a lot of requests from is, you know, can I take my data and can I push it up to Azure Maps and use it? And the answer is absolutely, you can do that. So you can, you can take your data and you can push it up to Azure Maps and you can store it there and we give you some space to put your data at, and uh, then you can take advantage of it in your uh, web apps and those kind of things, or mobile apps, and then uh, render it, query it, do whatever you need to with it. So there's a way to take your data. And this is gonna tie in later on to when I come back to Azure Maps Creator. So keep that in mind is that you can push your data up to Azure Maps. You can also always use some of the other Azure services. For example, you can use Azure SQL, which is the, uh, the cloud version of uh, SQL Server, and you can put your geospatial data in there too. Or you can use Postgres SQL and put your geospatial data in, in, in that location. 
um, and uh, use something like uh, PostGIS and uh, make it so it's a spatially enabled database. So there are a lot of options for you to move your, your spatial data up inside of uh, Azure. So keep that in mind. There's several possibilities here, and Gray Matter can help you uh, figure out uh, what is going to be your, your solution going forward. When it comes to the weather services, I mentioned that uh, we, we partner with AccuWeather, and they are uh, constantly giving us real-time uh, uh, feeds of, of weather, and that includes uh, current and predicted weather. So you can get uh, everything from a prediction down to the minute or out all the way to 45 days. So that's a, that's an incredible service that we have available to Azure customer. And remember, you don't have to use all of these services. If you only want to use the weather service and one aspect of the weather service, that's all you have to use. Unlike a traditional geospatial technologies, you know, you typically have to use all of it or none of it. With Azure Maps, you only have to use the parts of it that you want. So that's the that's one of the great things about this. With this weather service, you can display uh, the radar, so you can see if there's uh, raining occurring or if there's uh, snowing occurring or anything like that. And you can also see things like uh, cloud cover. And then recently we provided some capabilities around uh, figuring out is now a good time to go on a run. So it takes into account uh, is, is the air quality uh, that great today? And it'll come back and it'll tell you, yes, today's a good day to, to go on a run in this particular location, or no, it's, it's not a good time to go on a run in this particular location. Um, we also have uh, uh, some historical uh, data. You can actually go and look at the weather tiles, the how they're rendered on the map. You can see how they can what what it looked like an hour ago, and even what it looks like going to look like in the future. So you can do, uh, so you can see some predictive capabilities built into this. And then there's the next thing here I want to talk about is our Power BI integration. So you can actually. Uh, uh, render um, all of this, uh, well, not all of it, but a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about here, you can actually do this inside of Power BI too. So Azure Maps is no longer uh, focused on developers. Anyone can use Azure Maps inside of Power BI. And much of the capabilities that you can use when you, for example, if you want to render the map, it actually doesn't cost anything. So you can use Azure Maps for for visualizing our, our base maps and uh, take advantage of them. It's currently in public preview and uh, it will remain there till, till next summer when it eventually goes to general availability. So you can make dashboards, reports, uh, all those kind of things, and we will have more and more capabilities coming with, with Power BI integration with Azure Maps. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Also, Azure Maps works in the government cloud. So uh, we support all kinds of, uh, uh, of the compliance and security requirements that, uh, that all other Azure services have to meet. So that includes things like in the, in the US government, things like FedRAMP, uh, FISMA, and a, a bunch of other standards that we have to adhere to. And that includes things like GDPR, and there's a really, there's a long list. And then lastly, I just want to talk here about uh, Azure Maps Creator. You can think of it as a map publishing technology. And so think about this. You have a geospatial data set and you want to publish it up to Azure and take advantage of it. This is another way you can take your data and make it available inside of Azure Maps. And in this initial release that came out of Azure Maps Creator back in May, it focused on indoor mapping. So with this initial release, you can take CAD drawing files and push them up to Azure Maps, and it will turn them into vector tiles, which uh, it, which makes the maps render very quickly, and it'll also create a web uh, uh, feature service. And that means that you can query it, you can visualize it, you can uh, uh, style it in various different ways. Uh, so that's what Azure Maps Creator uh, does at this point. It allows you to take your data and uh, visualize it in, in, um, in, in a web app, for example. Now, with that said, I want to show you a, a couple of examples here. And the best way to learn Azure Maps is by looking at our samples. 
So uh, there's, uh, if you go to this site here, and you're welcome to go take a look at this and, uh, um, and, and look at the 200 plus samples that we have um, up in, on the sample site. So it covers all of these different topics like animations, uh, we have different controls, we have device sensors examples, heat maps, image layers, and so on and so forth, very long list. So it can be something as simple as creating a thematic map. Uh, for example, let's say we wanted to render the uh, US population by counties. And we wanted to, to show that. And we actually wanted to show this uh, over time from the year 2000 to the year, to the year 2010. And you can see very clearly that a lot of people in the Midwest part of the US left those areas and they moved to more urban areas during that decade. So it's a great way to create a chloroplast map and to render this and even visualize it temporally. Or let's say you wanted to track a, a vehicle and it could be anything. It could be uh, a car or it could be something that happened in the past. It could be something that happened uh, even presently. And we can even play an animation, for example, and you can see that it gets tracked. We can speed that up. We can do all kinds of different things. We can see the telemetry as it comes into the map. So lots of possibilities there. There's also things like if you wanted to uh, render the traffic on the map, it's very easy to do that. So here's an example of Azure Maps and uh, the traffic data. There's a button here, I'll just click on it and you will see the, uh, the current uh, traffic in Seattle, Washington. So you can see there's a legend on the map. It tells you where the, uh, where the areas are green, meaning the traffic is good. And obviously if they're slow, they turn a, a dark color. But you can see also the incidents on the map and this gets updated every minute. So it's a great way to uh, make real time decisions based on what's happening in a particular area. Lots of other possibilities here. Like I said, there's there's over 200 samples. Uh, or let's just say you wanted to do something like uh, render store locations on the map. Well, that's very easy to do. Or let's say you wanted to do something like indicate whether the store is open. Uh, so you can create a pulse, uh, pulsing animation around that and you can see clearly. Or these could be IoT sensors and you simply want to show that the IoT sensor is, is enabled. I mean, this is exactly how you would do that. All of the samples that you see here, they're actually out on GitHub, and you can go out there and you can just literally copy and paste the HTML and JavaScript and uh, 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 modify it to your unique needs, and you're off and running. All you need is to, you'll need your Azure Maps subscription key, which is located right here. You just need to paste that in here. And we have instructions on how to do that. It literally takes about five minutes to create an Azure Maps account and you're up and running. You'll paste that in here and you, this, this app will actually run for you. So keep that in mind. That's how easy it is to get, get up and running with Azure Maps. Uh, a few other examples here. Let's say you have lots of IoT data and you have so much that when you render it on the map, it's too much for the human brain to understand. So how do we do that? Well, we can take all of these sensor locations, for example, and we can cluster them. And you can see this clustering happen here. Uh, for example, here, if I zoom in on Southern California, you'll see there's 357 points on the map. But as I zoom in, this starts to uh, decluster and you can see exactly where those locations are on the map. And you can control how the clustering occurs. Uh, there's lots of options here on, on controlling how the map gets visualized. Well, let's say you wanted to show the location of earthquakes, for example. There's something called a bubble layer. And with it, you can, you can set the size and the color of the point and based on the intensity or the magnitude of the earthquake. So there are lots of options there for how you render that particular map. I mentioned earlier how we have a, 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 a map styles and we have lots of options here for rendering our maps. So I'll just make some of these uh, visible here so you can do things like uh, show the map in a dark theme. A couple of different options and how you do that or you can uh, display uh, the satellite imagery, which by the way, actually comes from Bing Maps. And uh, it's actually rendered here very, very fast. And you can see exact details on the map. Um, we can also make the maps accessible. So if you're using something like an e-reader and you need high contrast, 
uh, you can actually visualize the map. So uh, Microsoft uh, accessibility is important as not only in, in when it comes to uh, routing and those kind of things, but also just making our maps so that anyone can use them. So lots of options here for tilting the map, uh, for uh, rotating the map and tilting it, and zooming in and zooming out. You have a lot of the standard controls that you would expect out of a, uh, a mapping engine. Or you can do things like, uh, um, you know, if you wanted to create isochrones or reachable ranges. So here's an example near New York City, and you can do things like routing with a car or a bicycle, uh, a truck, and you'll see that the polygon changes sizes based on how far you can drive in 15 minutes. And you can do that based on time, based on distance, and also even include traffic at a particular time of the day. So you can do things like specify the truck uh, length, height, weight, load type, et cetera. So lots of possibilities there. Um, anyway, there's a long, long list of uh, capabilities here uh, when it comes to creating chloropleth maps, showing your location uh, based on these uh, uh, sensor in your phone, for example. You can mark up the map. We have drawing tools. And we've added lots of great new capabilities to those so to uh, make the map so that you can mark it up. We support all kinds of geospatial formats like GeoJSON, TopoJSON, shapefiles. Uh, we have heat maps, uh, HTML markers and how you can do this. You can drag them, you can do, do drag and drop, you can do things like pie charts, you can display drone imagery, um, uh, all kinds of ways of visualizing lines, polygons, endpoints. You can style the map. We even have uh, 3D buildings. So here we are in London, and you can see the Tower of London and right there on this map, and uh, it shows up here. And of course, you can uh, zoom around and look at that particular map. Lots of other possibilities here. Um, it's really, really quite a long list of, of, of possibilities. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, We'll leave that for you to uh, take a look at uh, in your spare time. And of course, uh, feel free to contact uh, uh, Gray Matter. Uh, they will uh, be happy to help you implement any of this. So it's a, it's a really an extensive list of capabilities. Next thing I wanna jump to though is uh, our indoor mapping capability. So uh, like I said, this is what Azure Maps Creator does. It allows you to take your building floor plans, whether you have a building that only has a single floor or it's a multi-floor building, and you can ingest it. And here we are looking at a, a building. This is at the Microsoft campus. And you can see that I can click on each one of these rooms. Each one of the rooms is has a style applied to it based on the kind of room it is. You can see the, the room number, the floors, the outside temperature, and other things that I wanted to display here. You can also switch floors. We have a floor picker up here in the upper right-hand corner. And you, this is a, a, a building that has three different floors. And because this works with everything else in Azure Maps too, I can change this map and, and display it with the satellite imagery, for example. So here's that same building with the satellite imagery and uh, the floor plans being all uh, rendered on top of each other. What's cool about this is that this is now a digital twin of that particular building. So I can ingest IoT data coming from IoT Hub, and I can do something like turn on the temperature of each one of these rooms. I can put sensors in every one of those locations, and here I can see that there's a legend on the map that tells me exactly what the color of the what the color is and what the uh, the current temperature of each one of those rooms is. Or we can do things like occupancy. And we can actually have a sensor in each one of these rooms and it's actually counting bodies. We have a way of doing that right now. There's a open source uh, example of how to do that right on GitHub today. Um, or you could put uh, pressure sensors in each one of the chairs and see how many people are sitting in that room. Um, you can you do things like uh, detect whether there's social distancing and all kinds of other possibilities. Or you could put a sensor on a back door and see that it's open. And of course, you can take actions. If you have the ability with that door, you could actually press a button and close it uh, without actually having to go and visit that location. So lots of possibilities there. And if you want to build this kind of experience, you can actually do that because we have a sample out on GitHub that shows you how to do that. So there's a, 
There's an example right here, that's the URL, and the code is sitting right there for you to take advantage of. And it actually has even a, a richer capabilities than what I just showed. You can actually control all of that kind of stuff. You can track people moving through the building. You can show uh, uh, some different dashboarding options here. And there's actually a sample architecture of how you can go do this today or how you can uh, utilize the awesome services that Gray Matter has to help you build this out and configure it for your unique needs. So you, you'll see here that it's pretty detailed. You have the different IoT sensors. They're sent through a cloud gateway and that is then sent to um, a Azure function in this case and also Azure Stream Analytics, which I talked about earlier, which allows you to evaluate uh, what, what's happening with that telemetry. You can then send it to event hubs and eventually to another function app and so on and eventually render that on Azure Maps. So lots of possibilities and what you can do there with, uh, with uh, this, uh, this amazing set of capabilities. So please uh, take advantage of this. It's, uh, it's there for you and it's already, uh, the code is available for you to go and start doing amazing stuff with it. So this is kind of the same uh, architecture here. This is a real-time tracking architecture that uh, we talked about a little bit earlier ago, but instead of using uh, uh, um, uh, some of the other things that we talked about, you can use things like Cosmos DB uh, and uh, some other options here. You can also integrate Azure Active Directory. So once you get a sense of how this works and uh, all of the different options you have, I think you'll see that uh, it really opens up a lot of possibilities and how you can create uh, unique experiences. I talked about Azure Maps Creator, and, and this is just a quick slide here to once again remind you that it does focus on indoor mapping, and you can create all kinds of uh, unique indoor mapping experiences, whether it's fire and police, whether it's healthcare, uh, whether it's a manufacturing plant. There's there's all kinds of different uh, possibilities there. So in fact, you can do everything from asset tracking. Uh, robotics and navigation. We will have wayfinding coming out here in the next several months. So you'll be able to do not only uh, routing when it comes to the outside world, you'll be able to do routing inside buildings too. So think about the possibilities there. And eventually we're going to make it so that we're going to connect up the outside routing capabilities with the inside routing capabilities. So you'll be able to do a complete end-to-end -end routing. So for example, if you wanted to route some, some good from some location in China uh, where it's being made all the way to the port and from the port across the oceans, from the oceans to the next port, all the way to its final destination at a customer location, you will eventually be able to do that with Azure Maps. And I mentioned robotics navigation. There's a lot of possibilities uh, with what you could do there. Uh, Microsoft has a robotics operating system, so keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, you can, of course, uh, overlay uh, other kinds of analytical data, heat map visualizations, and so on. And then lastly, a couple of wrap-up slides here. Keep in mind that Azure Maps was built for enterprise customers. It's globally available. We have different SDKs. It works with other Azure services. The maps are updated weekly, so you don't have to worry about that. The traffic data is updated every minute. It's, uh, it's compliant with all kinds of different standards, different uh, federal laws, um, and, and so on. It works with Azure Active Directory, so you have an identity as a service available to you that you can, so you can make your apps and everything secure and compliant. It's GDPR compliant. We support all kinds of uh, languages. Uh, there's several dozen that you can render the maps in. Um, well, the maps are, of course, like I mentioned before, we try to make them as accessible as possible. There's two tiers for using Azure Maps. And so we, in that first tier, we, uh, we uh, give you lots of uh, uh, free uh, uh, transactions that you can use to do things like build POCs. So uh, doing things like that, you actually won't spend uh, anything to do something like a POC. You also have options. Uh, you can do trial, you can do pay as you go. You can even create an enterprise agreement between uh, uh, Microsoft and your organization. Uh, there are multiple tiers, and uh, there's some there's some great options there. This thing is highly scalable, so it can pretty much handle anything you throw at it. 
There's no upfront costs. So literally you go into Azure Maps, you create that Azure Maps account and you're up and running and there's nothing else to do and you only pay for what you use. So if you don't use it one month, you don't pay anything. If you go 10 months without using it, you will not get a bill from us. But then that one month you do use it, that's when you would actually get a bill from us from uh, from your usage. Um, you, you can also use things like Azure Cost Management to control your costs. So the, uh, obviously the cloud has a different model when it comes to budgeting and those kind of things. It does work with other Azure services like Azure Service Health, like I mentioned, Azure Active Directory, Azure Key Vault, Azure Resource Manager, and also Azure Lighthouse, which allows our partners to manage your applications through a single control plane. So there are a lot of options there that you can take advantage of. And I think I'm out of time, so I'll open it up to uh, Q&A if anybody has any questions or has any comments that they would like to make. Uh, please feel free to do so now. Thank you, Ron. As, uh, you managed to get through quite a lot in uh, in, in three quarters of an hour there. Um, so yeah, please feel free to ask any questions. I think Julia has received some. Um, so first one is, what can we expect to see come out in the next six months for Azure? Uh, great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, uh, so there's there's a there's a whole bunch of different uh, uh, things that we have coming uh, when it when it uh, when you look at our roadmap. So it includes um, everything from extending our current capabilities. So you will see a lot more coming with uh, Power BI. Uh, I actually forgot to show that. So let me show that right now. This is actually what it looks like today. So you'll see with Power BI, this is the Azure Maps visual, and this is uh, bike racks in Chicago, for example, and these are the neighborhoods. And this is just the Azure Maps visual, and you'll see that it works with the other, uh, other uh, Power BI uh, visuals. So you can see by neighborhood um, uh, what that looks like, and you can configure the map. So we're gonna be adding a lot more capabilities to it. We're gonna be doing things around extending Azure Maps Creator so that it handles other kinds of data sets over the next several months. Um, we're gonna have a bunch of more coming up about uh, when it comes to um, uh, making our capabilities uh, just more performant. Um, uh, so you'll see a lot more there. More geolocation capabilities will be coming about. Um, more services that we take from TomTom, Tom, AccuWeather, and MoveIt will be exposed. We have some new partnerships that we're going to announce, especially when it comes to satellite imagery. We have some other capabilities coming around, uh, 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 AI and machine learning when it comes to satellite imagery. We have some elevation services that will be coming online. So it really is a long, long list, and we're happy to talk to uh, your organization about what that uh, what what that's going to be, and we can uh, if uh, if you can put an NDA in place, we can even share more details than what I can talk about here today. Next question. Um, next question is uh, I like Azure Maps and want to give it a go, but I don't have expertise on Azure infrastructure. Does Gray Matter have anyone who can assist? Oh, I'll take that one then, Ron. Yep, we certainly do. Uh, so our um, cloud know-how services team, we have Azure Architects. Um, we also have uh, Azure Maps specialists who will be able to help you um, get started on that. So yeah, please reach out to Grey Matter um, and we can certainly help you there. And the next question is, uh, is TomTom hosted on Azure? Uh, they are. Um, as part of our partnership with uh, TomTom, they actually moved to Azure and they are right on the Azure backbone. So once you send a request to Azure, it actually isn't going outside of Azure because TomTom is sitting right there on the Azure uh, uh, network backbone. So it makes it uh, very easy for us to deliver their data very quickly because they're just sitting there on Azure. Stuff. Um, next one is where can I find help to migrate to Azure Maps from another platform? Um, 
Yeah, Ron, I believe there's there's some um, some migration right. guides. Yeah, um, so if you go to our documentation, which is which is at this location, and um, you go to some of the uh, how to guides, there's a couple of options here for uh, migrating from uh, other technologies. For example, there's some instructions on how to migrate from uh, Google Maps. There's there's an entire document here that talks about migrating from Google Maps. There's a high level platform overview. And then when you, if you're talking about a web app, for example, there's a there's a detailed instructions here for almost everything uh, imaginable and also code samples if you are wanting to move from Google Maps. There's also one here from uh, moving from Bing Maps to Azure Maps if you want to do that. Uh, so that's also an option for you to, to take advantage of. Um, so if you have a, a Google Maps Android app, there's also uh, lots of great help here for doing that too. So several options um, and, and of course, uh, Gray Matter can help you out in that area too. Yeah, we certainly can. So we have the um, the migration service that, that we also offer. So I can work with you on that. Um, another question is when will iOS be supported? I think you mentioned earlier an Android SKE. DK and an iOS one on its way. That's right. So you can expect that sometime probably in the uh, first half of next uh, calendar year. OK, and uh, another question. How do the costs of Azure geocoding compare to Bing? Uh, that's a great question, and I actually don't know the answer to that uh, off the top of my head, so I would have to get back to you. Um, I think one of my colleagues is on the call, and maybe she might know the answer, uh, um, but I, I don't know off the top of my head, so I'd have to get back to you on that one. Okay, I, mean, I, I can hurt, uh, help to a certain extent on that, so... Um, if you have a look at the pricing details on the Azure Maps website, um, geocoding is, is actually part of the standard SO plan. Um, and yeah, there's, there's, there's a certain amount free you get per month. Um, and with Bing Maps, it's slightly difficult to compare like for like because Bing Maps, there's, there's several different licensing models. We've got a per user, per transaction, and uh, per, um, per asset. Um, but with, with Azure Maps, it's it's um, it's transactional. There's two types of transactional you can have. There's SO, which is um, the basic standard offering, and there's S1, which is some of the premium features such as batch geocoding, matrix routing, etc. But uh, um, yeah, I, I believe it is it is more cost effective um, with Azure Maps if it's just geocoding that you're doing. Yeah, I would I would think so. Um, so yeah, you're right. There's there's two tiers. There's an S0 and there's an S1. If you want to use um, the S0, it's for doing things like uh, proof of concepts or just low usage apps, and it includes uh, the search service. And the search service actually does come with some free transactions uh, every month too. So keep that in mind. If you just want to get started, it's a great way to take advantage of Azure Maps. And uh, uh, for example, if you want to just create a, an app and render the map tiles, uh, you actually get 250,000 combined total transactions for both the maps and the traffic uh, for free every month. So it's a it's a great uh, possibility to use. Uh, when it comes to, to search, it's 25,000 combined total transactions. And that doesn't include the weather service, for example. And I see another question. Um, what's the best way to buy Azure Maps? Uh, I think you kind of touched on that a bit earlier, Ron. You can do it via an enterprise agreement if, if you have one with Microsoft. Um, there's a pay as you go direct plan as well. Um, speaking with my, my gray matter head on, I would say that um, the best way would be on a CSP agreement. Um, so Grey Matter offers CSP agreements, both direct and indirect CSP agreements, whether you want to consume Azure yourselves or whether you want to sell Azure onto your to your customers if you're building applications for your customers. 
Um, that is uh, slightly cheaper than the direct plans, but also uh, you get the additional support from, from Grey Matter as part of that service um, with it. So I would recommend the CSP route. Yeah, that's right. Um, the uh, one one easy approach to is just get yourself uh, an Azure subscription and you can start using the services. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the Azure Maps account doesn't cost anything to create. Uh, you create it and you start using it. You're only charged for what you use. Great stuff. OK. Um, I don't think we have any more questions right now. So, um, Ron, if you could just share the last slide with, with us. There's some uh, contact information on there. Absolutely. Here you go. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, if you've got any questions around Azure or Azure Maps or you just want to discuss your use case or any projects you've got um, coming up, please reach out to our mapping team. We'll be able to help you. So the email address is there and a contact number. Um, we can also, well, we, we uh, reach out to the Azure Maps team, um, the team that's run, runs in, in in Seattle. And uh, if there's if there's anything um, that you want to discuss, we can we can also set up calls with, with the guys there um, if necessary. So there's lots of resources. As Ron showed you there was uh, over 200 code samples, so a lot of information there available for you to to self serve. But also just bear us in mind, we are here to help you and the uh, Azure team um, in Azure Maps team in the US are there also to help you get your your projects off the ground. So please reach out. Um, finally, Ron, thank you very much. That was very, very um, good information you've you've shared with us. Um, I don't know how you managed to get so much into that uh, into that forty five minutes, but that was um, absolutely fantastic. So, thank you very much um, for your input today. Thank you, guys. It was great talking with you, and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, working with all of you in the future. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.